Understanding MVVM Architecture The default architecture of an iOS application follows the Model View Controller or MVC pattern. In MVC pattern, your controller is responsible for talking to the view and controller is responsible for talking to the model. And that worked fine. I mean, there's nothing really wrong with the MVC pattern. The only problem becomes when people start a lot of putting a lot of code into the controller. And you might already have heard the terms as massive view controller. To combat with a massive view controller, we introduce the concept of view models. A view model can be sitting in between a model and the controller. And the same view model will be directing the flow from the controller to the view. That means that if the controller has to display something on the screen, the controller will ask the view model and view model will display that thing on the screen. The controller is also responsible for communicating the view model to populate the actual model, the domain object. Let's take a look at a very simple example. If we have a registration screen which consists of a username text box and a password text box, this particular view can be represented by a view model, let's call it registration view model, by a username which is of type string and a password which is of type string. The registration view model will serve as a data transfer object or you can also think of it as a person who will supply information to the view. And you can see that the registration view model kind of reflects what the view is doing because it has a username field as well as a password field. And on the registration screen on the left, the view also has a registration field and the password field. When the person fills out the username and password on the left and press the register button, a registration view model is created and the username from the text boxes got transferred to the username and password property in the registration view model. Later on, this view model can be sent to the domain object or converted to a domain object and sent to the database. Let's look at a little bit more complicated example. If we want to represent the screen on the left, which consists of a filtering option like starters, entrees, and desserts, as well as a listing of different dishes, we're going to create view models for that. Let's take a listing for example. This particular listing can be represented by an array of menu item view model. Because array because there are a lot of, well, menu items. What about the top part, the filtering part, highlighted in blue? This can be represented by another view model, which is menu choice filter view model. If you might be thinking what menu item view model looks like, then a menu item view model will look like this. It will represent everything that is displayed on the view which in this case is name, description, and the image URL because we are displaying images of the dishes. The menu choice filter view model will look kind of like this. It has a list of choices like starters, entrees, and desserts, but it also has an event like did choice selected, which is going to send the choice and then someone can use that to perform an action to filter. You will see later on when we are working in a project that it's a better idea to combine these two view models and put them in one of the parent view models, which will represent the overall look and feel and the view model for the whole screen. So stay tuned for that.